So we got Bob Duncan from Grow Bay USA, makers of Pegasus, and he's going to tell us about the wonderful new Pegasus scroll bandsaw. It's kind of like bringing together the best features of a bandsaw and a scroll saw in one brilliant device and runs the Pegasus blades that we all know are the finest available. And uh, we got Miter Mike from Miter Mike's Workshop. He's going to uh, learn everything he possibly can about this saw and Bob's going to take it away from here. Well, the first thing about this is we really built this saw from the ground up to be able to use blades in this saw. Normally, the smallest blade you can get for a bandsaw anymore is about an 8-inch blade. And consequently, that is the largest blade that we make for our saw. What I've got on here right now is the number 12, which is the second to largest blade. And what I say we built it from the ground up, we started with a basic bandsaw frame and then made it better. So part of those things, Part of the things that make it different are, we're starting off at the top, are the wheels. Normally on a bandsaw, the wheels are crowned, so there's a bulge in the center, and because of that, you want your blade to run in the center of that so the teeth don't touch the tire. On ours, if you have a crown on the, the wheel, it's just going to roll right off when you have blades this small. So we have a flat wheel instead. And because of our teeth, if you, if you touch the sides of our teeth, like our scroll saw blades, we have an alternating set on our teeth, so the teeth point opposite directions, instead of all pointing one direction like we do on a normal bandsaw. Now because we have teeth pointing both directions, instead of a regular rubber tire, which you get cut to shreds, this is more of like a Kevlar material here that's going to stand up a lot better through these blades. Then moving down a little bit, we designed this amazing guide system that uses precision bearings manufactured in Switzerland to support the blades. Normally, you have a block or a wheel or some other thing to support your bandsaw blade. On our saw, we have these precision engineered bearings with precision machine slots that the blades actually ride in. This blade, you can see this number 12 blade, is sitting back in this slot. So when you're cutting and turning tight corners, this blade, these bearings, there's one on the top and on the bottom, which is kind of hard to see on the bottom, but they have matching slots and they support the blade top and bottom. And that's how you can turn 90 degree turns on this saw without breaking these tiny, tiny blades. And the saw comes with a number 12 blade and a number 9 blade. So this slot is precision machined for the number 12 blade. This slot on the side of it is precision, precision machined for the number 9 blade. And then we move down here. Working our way down, we have a heavy ha cast iron table and mm -hmm. solid clamps that you can set to you can go to 45 degrees one way and not quite as far the other way because it hits this, normally down about 15 or 20 degrees. And down here we have the same flat wheel and the same Kevlar-like material tire. And it's actually, this saw is actually a two-speed saw. Normally for woodworking, you you use it on the faster speed, but if you wanted to cut some soft metal or something like that with a saw, you could loosen up and change the pulley like you would on a on a drill press or something like that mm -hmm. to slow the speed down and cut soft aluminum and soft steel and things like that with these same blades because our blades were actually based on jeweler's blades mm -hmm. used to cut metal. Mm -hmm. Are those cast iron wheels? Um, I think they're cast aluminum wheels. Cast aluminum? Yeah. So it's cast aluminum wheels, but a cast iron frame. So it's a really heavy duty frame mm -hmm. that's not going to move and stay stable the whole time. Mm -hmm. and, and the other side of it here on the bottom, most 14 inch bandsaws come with a half horsepower motor. We jacked it up and have a three quarter horse motor here because we don't want it to slow down. And it's air cooled, there's a fan in here to cool it. And this is the lever you turn to move the motor in and out to change the speeds. And finally over here in the bottom, We have a good dust port. This is a normal two and a half inch dust port, so it'll hook onto a regular dust collector, or you can use a, a standard shop rack to hook into it. Right, which we didn't use for the straight show purposes because it's too noisy to keep it right. running. Yeah, I, I can't yeah. talk over it. Yeah. But it does a good job of collecting all the dust, especially when you have a fine plate like this, you're gonna create finer dust and you wanna keep that on your mind. All right, you wanna show it off for a minute? When you're using it, you want to make sure that you get more so than any others. You want to make sure that you have the, the guide as close to the block as possible because that's where you're getting your support from. Mm -hmm. If I had the guide the whole way up here and tried to cut with it, I'd be much more likely to break the blade. So, 
And this little dance on bottom. First, we cut off the bottom. Then, we're going to cut our key. And you can see that this is coming from the bottom and the top, so it's cutting perfectly square as you're cutting. And you'll notice that I'm literally just using two fingers to turn this. I'm applying no pressure to the wood to hold it down against the table because the blade is all traveling down. So unlike a scroll saw where you have to kind of maintain a death grip on the wood, this is effortless. And here I'm cutting out the inside of the box. saw that can cut wood this thick with that tight of a turning radius. And we can move it in bigger. Juniper here. Juniper. So it's a softer wood than yellow heart, but I'm going also a lot thicker here. This is approaching the capacity of the saw. And if I cut straight through, I'll be effortless. Cutting into the end ring, which is the most difficult. Turning. Again, same turning radius. And there's zero deflection. This piece of wood will fit through the bottom here and come out both ends. If it had bowed or bent at all, all right, you wouldn't be able to do that. That's right. It's like a puzzle piece. Yeah. Don't forget we got Jeff from the Walnut Block over here. And over at the, uh, overall, well done thank you 